If you've ever grown elderberries before, you may have some bags of elderberries in the freezer right now, and you may be wondering what to do next. So Jennifer and I are going to share some ideas with you. So I've grown elderberries for several years, probably, gosh, probably close to about eight years now. And just in recent years, you've probably noticed when you go to a grocery store or a pharmacy, you know, a department store on the shelf, there's a lot more elderberry products than there used to be. And I put some photos up here of some of the products that you might be seeing now. You can find uh, gummies, uh, which you know, it says, you know, gummies with vitamin C and zinc. You know, I've seen that a lot at the different stores. I've seen cough drops like I have here in the, the center of the slide. And I found this elderberry juice uh, at our local hy V store here in uh, Kirksville. And it was uh, produced by a local Missouri elderberry farm. So that they be, become very popular in the last uh, few years. So what do I do with my frozen elderberries? So we know um, some of you may have frozen elderberries uh, in your freezers and you're wondering how do you process them or what, what do you do with them? What can you make with them? And I, like I said, have grown them for about eight years. And before that I was harvesting them from, well, from ditches really uh, and around creek areas, you know, because they like wet, uh, they like wetter areas. So I was harvesting native elderberries and then I pl planted some of the extension office here in Adair County and I planted some at my house. So now I have access to plants and I don't have to go you know, around the county looking for them in ditches anymore. So they're typically harvested July through August. Here in Northeast Missouri, it's usually August and it just happens to always be right around Missouri State Fair time when I'm busy with that. But in the southern part of the state, I think they are ready, and Kelly can talk more about this. I think they're ready in, in July, uh, mid to late July. But up here in Northeast Missouri, if you're from this part, they're probably not gonna be ready in your uh, elderberry plot until probably the early part of August through uh, mid-August. And then I, I pick them, my kids will help me pick them, and we bag them, and I freeze them because like I said, I am busy at that time with fairs, my kids show sheep and I don't have time to process them at all. So I pick them and I put them in my deep freezer. And before I do that, I will spread them out on a cookie sheet. All right, at least I try to. This year we were so busy, I just picked them, put them in bags and put the bags in the freezer. And that is not a good idea because they get all tangled up and just become a massive tangled up mess in the bags. So if you have the time, it's best to spread them out on a cookie sheet and then put them in your freezer and, and let them freeze and then take them off the cookie sheet and put them back in bags. Because when you get ready to process them, it will be a lot easier to deal with them that way versus just like I had to do this past summer, just throw them in the bag and they become all tangled up, okay? So then I store them in the freezer until I am ready to process them. And here in the last few years, it's usually been Labor Day weekend when I, I've had the time to finally get around to the processing them. But, you know, it might be Christmas break before you might have time or, you know, just it, it doesn't matter. I, I don't think you ought to wait a year because some of our fruits do get freezer burned. So I think a year might be a little excessive to have them in your freezer. So I would probably encourage you to do it within about six months. And then how long does it take to process them? Well, it takes me about half a day. So it, it really depends on how many berries you have to juice. And I usually have lots of Walmart or hy V sacks like you see here in the picture. This is from, oh, probably five years ago. My son, this son is now 11 and he's probably five or six in that picture. So that's from a few years ago, but I'll have lots of bags. I have them in my freezer and it takes me about half a day to, to get everything juiced, or I do it over the course of several days even. Uh, but if you just have a bag or two, you can probably get it done in about an hour, hour and a half. And here's a cookie sheet where I've spread out the berries. They still kind of look like they're in a, you know, a, a, a kind of in a tangled mess. But this process of doing it, putting them on a cookie sheet is better than just throwing them all in the bag and, and leaving them that way. So I've some years tried to put them on cookie sheets like this. I freeze them and then I put them back into bags. 
And then on the right side, you see what's called a, a juicer, a, a three, like a three pot juicer. The bottom part, part is the boiling water. So you put water in that bottom half, it, it boils. The middle section is what catches the juice. And then the top part of that is a colander. And you stick all your berries in there and then the juice falls through to that middle pan. So that steam, that heat, that steam goes up through the pans and it creates the juice and the juice goes in that middle pan. And then it comes out the tube. You can see a tube um, coming out there on the, on the left of that juicer. And there is a thing on here that keeps the juice from coming out until you press it. So moving on, I cut the stems apart as much as I can. So that's a question people have had. What do I do with the stems? So there are, there's a lot of stems with elderberries and you wanna to try to get rid of all the big stems or as much stem as you can, but you are not going to get rid of all those stems. It's just nearly impossible. And what I do is I shake the berries against my top portion of that juicer. Um, I shake them and then I also have to pull, I pull them off the main stem. So, you know, I'm cutting, I'm pulling. It's a process, it really is. And like I said, I, I leave a lot of those little stems. It's, it's okay to do that. Um, there's not enough cyanide in there that's going to harm you. And Kelly's going to talk about cyanide here in just, just a minute. Um, but it's okay if you have a bunch of those little fine stems in there because it's just nearly impossible to get rid of them all. So then I juice the berries uh, with those little stems in there. And like I said, I put them in the top part of that juicer, which is like a colander. And you can also use a pot. If you don't have a juicer, you may be thinking, well, I don't have a juicer. And I will tell you those juicers, um, they're a little pricey. They're around $100. You can buy them off Amazon. You can also find them at um, little country stores. Around here in Northeast Missouri, we have little stores out in the country where we can purchase uh, juicers and just kind of unusual things that you might not find at a store like Walmart, okay? so. Uh, that, that's where you can get them, um, but you can also use a pot. In December, I wanted to make some blackberry syrup to, to give as a Christmas gift, so I just used a pot. I didn't even use my juicer, and I put the blackberries in there, which you can do the same with the elderberries. Put your elderberries in your pot and put a little water in there, and then you can use a cheesecloth to strain out the elderberry juice, and I should mention that I I also use grated ginger. So two years ago, I was visiting our first elderberry farm in Schuyler County, which is up here on the Iowa border. And the owner of the farm told me that he was putting in grated ginger and cinnamon. And he gave me a sample and it was good. Uh, it, was, it was better than just straight, straight juice. So that's what I've been doing for the last two years is putting in some grated ginger root and cinnamon in the top portion of that colander. Okay, so as it juices down, the ginger and the cinnamon go through um, with the juice. Okay, so when it goes into my jars, that's all getting mixed in. And if you're going to fill your jars, your canning jars, you must water bath it for at least 10 minutes or you can freeze jars. And I never knew this until my mom, who is down in Texas County, she's had master gardener training and she grows some elderberry plants. And She's like, just freeze your elderberry um, juice in the jars rather than heating up your house. Because I do, I, I do other canning and, you know, it, it does heat up the house for a long time. So anyway, I started freezing my elderberry juice in the mason jars, but make sure that they are not too full because sometimes I've had them too full and they will crack. But if you do not get them too full, if you leave about an inch of head space, they will not crack. And then when I want a jar, I just pull it out of the freezer, set it on the counter and it thaws out. And we've been using a lot of it here in the last year or so, and it's, it's been good to have around. I do notice that it, it does help. For example, if I have a slight sore throat coming on, you can kind of sometimes tell when that's coming on. If I drink elderberry juice, within about three hours, those symptoms are going away or, or they're gone. So uh, I really do feel like it has a lot of helpful benefits. Now I wanted to show you, here's the juicer and some of the, the juice in the jars. And then after it's um, juiced, after you get all the juice out of those berries, you're gonna be left with a bunch of pulp and, and stems like you see here on the left side. And you can make things like elderberry pancakes, elderberry muffins, and jam or jelly. 
And I have also tried a, a cake, like a coffee cake with elderberries. Like I said, I've been doing this for about eight years and I, I really enjoy it. So contact me if you have any questions. And Kelly, back to you. All right. First thing I wanna say is please, 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 please make sure that you actually have elderberries. Um, there are some other naturally occurring berries out there that are purple and that sometimes get confused for elderberries. The picture here on the left shows elderberries as opposed to pokeberries. Elderberries grow on a shrub, a woody shrub. And you can see here that the shape of the fruit cluster is kind of a, an umbral shape. So it's kind of a rounded sign is what the official term for it is. And pokeberries form on kind of a drooping bottle shaped cluster. And pokeberry is also a deciduous green plant that dies back to the ground every year and they do have some toxic properties. And hackberries also can resemble elderberries as well, but they grow on a tree. So they're pretty easy to differentiate between elderberries. And if you ever need help identifying berries, certainly reach out to one of us. We can help with that. But the number one rule is to make sure that you actually are using elderberries. So I do something similar to Jennifer. I make my own juice, but I just destem my frozen elderberries. You can just leave them in a, I leave mine in a Ziploc bag. I kind of bang them on the counter and most of the berries will fall away from the, the clusters to make them easier to kind of destem. And then I put those destemmed berries into a pot on the stove and I just use a low boil and if you don't want to use too much heat, because that can um, dissipate some of the health benefits of the berries, but I just use a low boil and a potato masher, and I just kind of mash the berries, and then I strain the juice, and, and then once I have my juice, I freeze mine in ice trays, and so I have little ice-shaped frozen berry juice, and then if you've ever had raw elderberry juice or frozen elderberry juice, it doesn't taste the best. So what we do is we put it in lemonade and it makes a great refreshing drink and it's a good way to get your, your juice that way. And then you can also dry berries and make teas. And I'm not going to get into too much of elder flowers today, but you can also dry flowers and make tea as well. Now we do get a lot of questions about cyanide and elderberry plants do contain cyanide and the University of Missouri has been studying this for several years and they actually published a peer reviewed publication on this a few years ago. So if you want to read more about it, you can certainly look this up. But in a nutshell, you would have to eat large amounts of the plant to get enough cyanide to hurt you. So it's not that much of a concern. But here's a, a title of that publication if you do want to read more about it. 